Hey YouTubers, my name is Aditya and in this video we will be talking about OSI model. Yes, OSI reference model. OSI is Open System Interconnection Reference Model. So, it was introduced by ISO in 1984 and it's a seven layer structure which defines the multi vendor support in networking. So, talking about the layer 7 which is application layer. It is the layer where user interacts with network applications such as browser and Microsoft Outlook and uh, see browser uses these protocols so the very famous protocol which browser uses is HTTP right and the very uh, and the protocols uh, which these Microsoft Outlook uses is SMTP pop and IMAP SMTP for sending emails pop and IMAP for receiving the emails right so coming down to layer 6 which is the presentation layer yes it's a place where a bit of security is implemented in the form of encryption yes on presentation layer data gets encrypted so what is encryption the question must be arises in your minds encryption is converting simple text into cipher text okay and while encrypting we create a key which is basically a secret key which is needed to decrypt the data so without that key you cannot decrypt the data and you have to create a key while encrypting so this is like a you can say prerequisite uh, or a standard thing for encryption after presentation layer we have layer 5 which is session layer okay now session layer which deals with creating managing and terminating the sessions so these were the upper layers like application presentation and session coming to the lower layers the layer 4 is transport layer yes once transport layer receives the huge amount of data from upper layers right transport layer receives the huge amount of data from upper layers like from application layer from presentation and from session layers it breaks down the data into smaller chunks and adds something which we call TCP and UDP header and source and destination port numbers right TCP is transmission control protocol UDP is user datagram protocol TCP is reliable and is connection oriented while UDP is unreliable is unreliable and connectionless protocol right so after adding these things like TCP UDP those port numbers those chunks get converted into something we call segments segments at transport layer yes so after transport layer we have this network layer network layer fine when these segments go further down at the network layer it adds the logical address or I can say the IP address to it making these segments converting these segments into packets the so source source IP address and destination IP address plus TCP UDP is equals to a packet at network layer routers are located at this layer at network layer or layer 3 now the pa the packets are received at data link layer after the network layer data link layer which adds the source MAC and the destination MAC address to them making them or converting them into something we call frames frames yes so frames are on data link layer or I can say layer 2 so the equation must be source MAC address plus destination MAC address plus source IP plus destination IP plus TCP UDP plus the port numbers is equals to frame cool right so switches are located at this layer at data link layer see the switches now the physical layer finally the frames have arrived the physical layer where they got converted into bits binary or you know like electronic signals or zeros and ones ups and downs right it is where actual data transmission happens physical layer is the place where actual data transmission happens and cables hub repeaters these devices these technologies are located at this layer so let's recall what we learned so far right so this is OSI model open system interconnection reference model it was introduced by ISO in 1984 it's a seven layer structure which defines the network which defines how multi vendor support works in a network environment right so we'll start it from application layer which is the layer 7 and the physical layer is layer 1 we'll start it from application layer application layer is a place where user interacts with application 
user interacts with network app application yeah network applications coming down to layer 6 presentation layer which basically deals with the encryption of data like converting data format and all these things session layer to start and to stop the sessions in between to manage the, ses the sessions then we have layer 4 which is basically one of the lower layers a transport layer transport layer where TCP and UDP TCP or UDP if not and maybe TCP maybe UDP UDP in live scenarios and TCP is uh, you can say normal data transmission scenarios TCP works right UDP works only when in live scenarios mostly like right? like we can for example a video call on on Skype maybe a remote session maybe uh, if uh, if I'm a service provider and my customer is having some issue on his or her laptop so I might use the LMI log me in rescue tool so LMI all the communication all the transmission all the communication in that tool in that LMI tool is based on TCP and UDP both TCP for the chatting purpose UDP for the session purpose okay so layer 3 is network layer where this logical addresses came into came into picture and we find routers on this layer right right told you before we routers are located on this layer then we have data link layer where MAC addresses like or the I can say the physical address came into the picture and switches yes so switches are located at this layer and then the physical layer where cable network interface card NICs hubs repeaters all these things like all the physical thing all the physical networking components comes at physical layer yes so this is all about the like a recall a quick recall it was right so let me tell you the two most important processes of OSRFL model the one the first one is uh, encapsulation and the second one is decapsulation when my data is flowing from layer 7 to layer 1 or from application layer to physical layer there is a whole process we call data encapsulation because on each and every layer there's something is happening to the data something is adding to the data and at the time of decapsulation something is gets removed or removing from the data so this is how encapsulation and decapsulation works remember at, on the physical layer the actual data transmission happens remember this always so see on each and every layer data is uh, get like that something is adding to the data on physical layer it's like a actual transmission on the decapsulation side or on the other side the thing is gets removing or is getting removed from the data and at the physical layer the user on the other side receives the data yes that that's all for today guys thank you so much for watching the video do like share and subscribe to my channel thank you so much guys